Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and in today's video, we're going to be covering rewards, specifically the Blight rewards. Now, I've been doing quite a bit of digging around and snooping around and spending a lot of my time researching where the best place to farm the new mechanic would be. So I've also been collaborating with a few other people doing their own research and we're going to be putting that together in this video and hopefully giving you guys a bit of an idea of how it all works. So to begin with, I want to quickly go over the basics. We all know there's three different colors in Peewee in terms of map tiers. There's the white, yellow, and red maps. Now this is particularly important as it was for Legion when we're talking about rewards. So I personally have noticed a massive difference between all three of the colors in terms of both the caliber and quantity of loot that I'm getting. And that stacks up perfectly with other people's results as well. So the thing I really want to highlight here is the following. I believe you get more tendrils, more loot tendrils in general, as well as more boss and kind of like difficult encounters, the higher you go up the tiers. So in white maps, we had reported by Q-Dog, you get an average of 3.9 loot tendrils per kind of um, map encounter. And for me, I had it at 4.88 for 75 maps run. And I never had a three tendril encounter, which didn't have multiple double lanes, which is pretty interesting. So I never dipped before below four reward chests. And in some cases I received many more than four reward chests, which is pretty interesting. Another fact that I'd like to point out is that is is possible to get what I'll call super encounters in your maps, which are pretty much on the level or close to a actual blighted map itself. So in one of my arcades, I believe I had 19 lootable chests with like three bosses coming at me. Um, so that's like 20, like almost 20 tendrils. It's pretty insane, like 20 tendrils worth of monsters. Now, what's interesting is I actually completely failed that. Uh, encounter it was just not doable for me but those do happen and it's pretty insane when they do so it's pretty cool and i'm definitely enjoying the mapping side of blight so in terms of what's best to do in my opinion it's a bit of a clear pattern there even though we've only got two data values and that is that it's probably going to increase by an average of one tendril by a map tier you go up. So for example, obviously you can have a minimum of three and probably maximum of like five-ish, probably can go much higher on those ones I just spoke about in white maps. You're probably gonna get an average of like, like minimum four and then like high is generally five to six in yellow maps. And then when you move into those red maps, you're probably gonna be looking at minimum five and then going up to that six to seven mark which is, in my opinion, a pretty good balance. You get probably like almost 50% more loot just for doing red maps minimum, and I do like that a lot in terms of rewarding higher tier play. In addition to that though, there is another key point, and that is that in my opinion, the caliber and quantity of loot in the chest also improves. Um, I noticed that I get tons more oil in yellow maps, like I'm talking noticeable, I get between like three to five oils per chest, whereas in white maps, you're probably looking at one to two, and if you're lucky, three. So definitely a big jump there, and I'm assuming in red maps, which I haven't had a chance to test yet, it's going to improve even further. So definitely pretty damn cool in my opinion, and you're gonna be able to chase those rewards up the tiers just how it should be. But in terms of efficiency, what would I suggest? So right now I'm doing tier six arcades, and I'm basically taking advantage of doing a low tier map for sustain as well as difficulty, but also taking advantage of the mid tier rewards allowing me to gain access to some more valuable oils, um, namely the opalescent oil, which I've already had two of them drop, which are worth quite a bit of money each, as well as the increased quantity of loot, caliber, and reward tendrils. So I do think that the yellow maps, specifically around the tier six to seven mark, are pretty happy median. You get the best of both worlds. And then if you wanna push it, you go up to reds. And I don't actually think that white maps is too worth it in terms of farming. You get significantly less oil, significantly worse like levels of loot, and it's not as satisfying because you have those like three tendril encounters which just don't feel juicy enough at 
all. So in terms of the overall loot, how do I feel about it? I think in yellow maps, it definitely feels worth my time to do them. It gives me about as much uh, like loot as the whole map a lot of the time. I'm getting like multiple fusings, multiple chaos, you know, I've had, I think three saints dro like, treasures drop from the actual loot explosion from the blight. So I definitely do feel like it's like worth my time. Having said that though, I can clear them out pretty quickly and I definitely do have a pretty good build for it. I will say that. So that's that in terms of the mapping, I would recommend going for the yellow maps for the best rewards so you can get those oils and sell them off and get those other currency juicy rewards. So let's move on to blighted maps. So I've done quite a bit of digging here as well. I've done probably around 25-ish to 30 mm, give or take blighted maps. Now I must admit a lot of these did crash and I didn't get data on these. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit at the end of the video. I have a few tips for you guys in terms of clearing blighted maps without crashing. We'll get to that in the end though. Um, but first of all, I wanted to quickly go over the results. So again, for blighted maps, we came at it from a few different angles. I came at it from solo play, group play, and I also gathered some information from some other sources. So I will talk about the results here. I do have some data for you. So to kick it off, we're going to talk about my solo experience. Now, the first map set I want to show you is a white map that I did. I evolved it. Well, sorry, no, I didn't evolve it. Let's go back to the start. A white map. I alked it. I chiseled it up to 20%. And then I made sure it was a high quantity and pack size. And then after all that, I used three clear oils on it, which add 5% pack size each totaling another 15% pack size, which is nothing to scoff at. So it was a reasonably juiced up map and I felt pretty good about it. And I managed to actually clear the whole map out, receive all the rewards without crashing any of that. And I got all that stuff back to base and into my stash. So here are the rewards. Boom, wow. Now I took a few Alks out of here. I think I took three Alks out of here, but plus three Alks. Ooh, yeah, I'm not too sure about this one. Now, this doesn't look good, does it? Now, there's a few things we could consider here. Okay, so this was a white map. So definitely very important to note that white maps aren't meant to be tough. They're not meant to be like kind of like overly rewarding. So, okay, that's one point. I used the lowest tier oil on it. So that's another point. I didn't have any strong gimmicks or anything like that, modifying the loot. So very interesting there, but definitely not worth what they're currently valued at. And that is actually 10C. And I did buy this one for 10C. And this is definitely not 10C that I'm getting back. So quite underwhelming indeed. Very, very uh, disappointing. It definitely reminds me a lot of synthesis. And I believe I would have actually been able to get a lot more currency per hour, simply farming my old normal maps or farming blood aqueducts, really, to be quite honest with you, which is really not what an end game mechanic should be. I should feel excited to get that blighted map, feel excited to juice it all the way up, put my hard earned oils on there and then jump into it and expect big rewards. But it really does feel like they dropped the ball, at least in this little bit here, in terms of white maps. So maybe this one was just a fluke. Obviously, we've discussed a few things there that could be going wrong. So let's move on. I did three more tests with the white blighted maps, just to be sure. That's another 30C that I invested. And we do have the similar kind of oils, you know, similar rolling process, all the things the same. So what did we get for another three maps? Here it is. Bam, wow, okay, definitely looking pretty similar in terms of the rewards. Uh, we got some fossils here, we got some stacked decks. Is this 30C though? Probably not, to be honest with you, which is kind of unfortunate and definitely a little bit disappointing because these maps, of course, do take time to run. You probably either have to A, buy one, or B, dig it out of your stash. You then need to roll it, make sure you have the correct oils to get it to where you want it to be. And then you, of course, need to run the map. You probably spend a few minutes setting up your towers. You spend five minutes doing the battle and then probably spend a few minutes after the battle, um, you know, looting everything, making sure you've got everything. So that's probably at least eight or seven minutes, if not 10 minutes for your average player. So 10 minutes and I lost money. Oh, definitely not a good way to look at these blighted maps. I feel like the in-map rewards are a lot more rewarding and I'm getting a lot more bang for my buck. I feel like in-maps 
I'm spending my time, I'm getting rewarded, but when I spend this amount of time, I expect to get a lot more, and I just wasn't feeling it. So, now I didn't use the expensive oils here either, so I decided to go look for help. I decided to team up with Cute Dog because I know he would have a few ideas as well, and we decided to pair up and do a two-man combo and go at the maps together with some different ideas. So the main ideas we decided to use was targeting divination cards, number one, using some OP oils, and then also trying the different map tiers, namely yellow and red. So the first thing we did was determine which oil might be the best cost effective. And the one we decided on was actually a teal oil, which basically adds a modifier to the map, which makes your blight chest lucky. Um, and basically what this means is it'll drop a higher caliber of loot. Now what we thought this might do, and what other people had said it might do, is drop some divination cards. So what we did is we went out and bought some blighted burial chambers, which cost quite a pretty penny, I might add. And um, we threw on three teal oils, which give an extra six blighted lucky chests and 15 pack size. So definitely juicing it up as much as we could without going crazy, but the mechanic should be very noticeable, right, if we're putting these oils on. So we decided to head into our burial chambers and check it out. Now, the rewards we got are with Cute Dog, as he was the one buying and running the maps. I just was there alone for the ride, but I can report that they weren't too great. I actually believe he definitely did not break even and did again lose money. Now these are white maps, white maps, and we didn't get any doctors, but again, I don't think that the actual oils were too noticeable. In some cases, I feel like we got, oh, maybe that one was lucky. It, dropped a little bit more, but I definitely didn't feel like the impact, the crunchiness of that oil being applied, and I really couldn't tell which chests were lucky and which weren't. So definitely not great, and again, following suit with these poor rewards. So a little bit yikes on the blight maps there as well. So okay, maybe white maps are just total dog, and they're not worth doing. That's definitely a possibility. So moving on to the next door, we decided to run yellow maps. Now I actually had a few of these myself, so we ran me and Cute Dog the combo. We did a yellow estuary, and this is what we got for another five minutes of both of our time. We got this much loot for a two-man split. Now this is actually all the loot as well. I didn't split with Cute Dog or anything. This is what we got. And again, we were using the teal oils in hopes of getting some divination cards, but alas. We didn't get any worth any money. Definitely unlucky to say the least, and it looks like the trend is continuing. In addition to that, I'd also noticed that we didn't get any additional blight tendrils from making the upgrade to white to yellow like we did in normal maps. So definitely not so great there, and I really would like to see the tears stale a little bit more. And I probably will do a discussion video on this coming up about my suggestions for this mechanic. But yeah, definitely not great. And then we obviously moved on to the final door, looking at red maps, and I'm sure you can guess how that went. Definitely not the best. Again, we spent an exorbitant amount of money on a layer map, which was blighted. I think Q-Dog spent 80 chaos to test this out. And again, we didn't get anywhere close to that. I'd say we made probably about 10C if we're lucky and it just really wasn't a whole lot of value there. So in terms of the Blight League, we're probably looking at a bit of a synthesis situation where the devs are gonna have to come in and rescue the loot situation for the end game scenarios. However, the in-game Blighted maps, um, kind of like the encounters in your maps, are very strong at the yellow tier, and I imagine only better at the red tier, and they feel very, very good. Now the icing or the death knell on the cake really for these blighted maps, the specific ones, the endgame encounters, is that they actually can't drop additional blighted maps and they can't drop oils, which is a big chase item for this league. So ultimately we're gonna have that discussion video like I talked about, but we're probably gonna need to see an overhaul to the loot in blighted maps and we're gonna need to hopefully see some improvements to oils. But again, that video is gonna be coming up Hopefully you guys have learned something and go blast those yellow maps and even try out a few red ones and get some big fat currency if you can. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.